Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another GDE Office Hours Recap. This is a weekly event that happens on over a web meet where I host a uh, open forum discussion on areas that you may be looking to improve your AppSheet apps or learn more about the AppSheet platform or some of the connected technologies that you may use. So use this as a resource uh, to help you in your development journey. Again, this is happening 11 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday mornings. If you'd like to get involved, please uh, follow the link in the description and you can sign up to be a part of what we're doing. All right, let's jump into today's topic. Today we discussed optimizing virtual column performance. So we'll first touch on when do you use virtual columns versus static columns. We'll then talk about how do you move virtual columns to static columns. Uh, then we'll talk about how you can update those. So there are two main ways that you can do that, either through client-side actions or through bots. So to briefly touch on the when do you use virtual versus static columns, I will say there is no hard and fast answer to this. Uh, but generally speaking, as a developer, you understand that over the life cycle of a product, it is likely to get more and more complex, which means that your virtual column performance is going to be more and more important. So as your rows of data grow, uh, you want to make sure that the virtual columns that you have implemented are not going to uh, get weary as your as the size of your application grows. So we want to limit cross table queries in our virtual columns. So if you're doing a select on another table, especially one that has more than a hundred to a couple hundred records, I would consider moving that to a static column if possible. Now, there are definitely exceptions to that rule, and I cannot cover all of those, uh, but the general best practice is if you can move it to a static column, try to. If the function of your app literally cannot work correctly by utilizing a static column, then use a virtual column. Uh, I'll give you an example of when you would use a virtual column versus a static column. So oftentimes with AppSheet, we use AppSheet because of, uh, of its uh, superior ability to utilize relational databases. Now, one of the challenges with that is that we often need column values from one of the parent tables. And in certain cases, you may, uh, you may have grandchild or even great grandchild or even further down the line relationships between tables. In that scenario, it may be helpful to carry on uh, the parent most uh, parent, uh, sorry, foreign key into a grandchild or a great grandchild table uh, so that you can easier utilize some of the connecting pieces. Now, um, again, you could do that as a static column, but you run into challenges whenever you may need to uh, re-reference a child item to a different parent. Um, it can get challenging as you have grandchildren and great grandchildren. So instead of doing that, uh, you may just have that as a virtual identifier. So you just have the, the only static foreign key is the immediately parent table to that table. Um, apologies if that is not a great example or if, if you haven't worked with relational data sets that deeply, um, you don't need to worry about it as much. But just wanted to provide one example where you might use a virtual column over a static column. All right. Uh, let's discuss moving virtual columns to uh, dynamically updated static columns. So in order to show you this, I'd like to go ahead and hop into our application for today. All right, so here we are in our application. Let me move my head out of the way. All right, what I would like to do is give you a demo briefly of what we are hoping to achieve. Now, this could be applied to a number of different use cases. In the scenario that we talked about today, we are talking about moving reporting to uh, static columns as opposed to virtual columns. So the developer that we were working with has a, an application and they're trying to run aggregate queries on one or more tables um, inside their application and they're trying to visualize those uh, dynamically for users. Now they had tried to achieve this using uh, static, sorry, using virtual columns, and 
we talked about the likelihood of, again, what we had already mentioned toward the beginning of this video, that at, over time, the complexity of your app will increase and the virtual columns uh, can tend to bog down your application over time as your data sets grow and as your application becomes more complex. So in order to reduce sync times and make the app uh, trim and quick and efficient, we wanted to move some of these columns to static columns instead. So here's how we did that. Let me go ahead and jump into our data source. You'll notice here what we have is a reporting table. And again, use cases could be entirely different for you, but the, uh, the demonstration of moving virtual columns to static columns should be consistent throughout. So hopefully this is uh, easily transferable for you. All right, so here I've got a reporting table. The idea behind this table is really just that there would be one record in it at any given time. And this uh, record will uh, continue to update dynamic queries across one or more tables and return the results. So in this case, we are just doing a query on our project table to get the total count of projects and the project photo table to get the total count of project photos. Now, you could have all sorts of different queries in here uh, that could be grossly more, more complex than this. And, and this would be a fine architecture for that. Um, you know, you could have 50 different aggregate queries that you may be running in this one table. And if they're all static columns, it's going to work trim and fast. So let's walk through how we accomplish that in this application. I had my one row identifier, and then you could have any number of columns that you want to create for different queries that you want to make. And then you're probably going to wrap it up with something like a timestamp that would be updated. Now, once you have that, go ahead and bring that into your application. So we've brought that into our application and we have established some queries that we want to run. So we put this in the app formula section. In this case, we did a count select of our project table. We just included all rows, but again, you may have much more complex queries than this. This is just an example. Then in our second column, our project photo count, we did the exact same thing, just referenced a different table. All right, so what I'm gonna do now that you can see that is show you how that works in real time. So let's go ahead and remove our values and we'll jump back into our application. We will resync just so that you can see there are no more values there. All right, so we have two ways now that we can update this dynamically through the app. We can either do it through a client side action or through a bot. Let's first walk through a client side action. So for client side actions, there are three ways that you can initiate those. The first and for foremost is going to be through actually pressing an action button. So in our application here, we have an action button that will perform a client side action. Um, the second scenario is going to be through a form. So if I click add here, what you'll notice is if I go to my view editor, in the behavior, you can link an action with a form save. So upon save this form, I could initiate one or more client side actions. Uh, the way that you do more than one is by grouping them together. So that's your second option. The last option is going to be on a row select of a multi-record view. So in our case, we have this home view and it's just a, uh, just, I guess a table view here of different project or sorry, not different projects. These are different views or functions within the app. So if I go to my view definition, you'll notice in the behavior dropdown, you have a couple different options here for what you do whenever you select a row or if you're on mobile, if you swipe left or right. Um, the only one I really ever use is just the row select and you can assign a client side action to it. Again, if you want to perform more than one action, you can create a grouped action that will link in multiple sub client side actions. So that's what we did in this case. In our home view, we are initiating a couple of different client side actions. And in specific here, what I'd like to point out, we created 
a, an additional record for our reporting uh, navigation, if you will. This is kind of a navigation table. And here I've got this extra column action. This is so that I can put a conditional constraint on which actions may be run in addition to the standard navigation action for uh, whenever a row is selected on this table. So let me show you how that's been implemented. If I go back to our application, what you'll notice in our grouped action, the second action here says recalculate reporting metrics action on a set of rows. So my uh, vision here whenever creating this was so that not only whenever you select this option, it navigates you to the reporting view, but also updates those values dynamically so that you're not seeing outdated data. So in this case, um, the way that we achieve that is by linking a couple client side actions together. The first thing I needed to do was create an action on the reporting table. And I called this update timestamp updated. Now, all this did was reset the timestamp updated to a different value, UTC now, which is just going to take the current date and time in UTC and supply it for our timestamp updated column. Now in doing so, that is going to recalculate every column that is set to an app formula, or in some cases, there is also the ability to do an initial value. Um, and let me just show you for a column that has an initial value, you also have this additional option uh, called reset on edit. And this basically gives you the ability to either use it as a static column that you manipulate or as a app formula type column in certain cases. So you can actually throw conditions on when you want it to reset. Um, so fun little feature there within AppSheet. So it would also recalculate those if you had a reset on edit set to toggle on. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through that. Whenever we select our reporting view or line item here, it is going to recalculate our values. If you recall, I had those emptied out. And so it just recalculated them and navigated us to that view. Um, so again, I've got that first client side action, which is updating our timestamp. What I forgot to mention, and I apologize for that, is the second action, which is linked in our gallery table for recalculating reporting metrics. And what this is doing, it's going to run an action on a set of rows. That is what AOSR stands for. Again, it's originating on the gallery table, so on our home view. Um, and then it's performing this action on the reporting table. We wanted it to update all rows, which in our case is just gonna be one. Um, and then we wanted to simply update the timestamp updated. All right, and the condition, as I mentioned earlier, is whenever the action column is two. So, if that column here in our gallery table is two and we select that record, then it's going to initiate that action. Okay, so there you have it. Both of those client side actions are essential in order to perform this operation, at least in the way that I envisioned it. It may be something different for you. I will say a specific use of this sort of architecture is often if you have multiple uh, child items to a parent item, many times you may adjust multiple child items. And at the end of adjusting a child item, you may want to update uh, potentially aggregate values within a parent item. I'll give you an example. So you may have orders and orders have order line items, different products and quantities that have been purchased. Well, the, you want to see the order total dynamically as you, a user may be adding line items. So in a form save action, you may include something like what we've developed here that will update instead of all records in a table, it would just update your parent record in that table and it would recalculate your sum total of all of your order line items. So that's common use case. Um, you know, you may see something similar for inventory transactions or something to that effect. Um, but this sort of architecture is commonly used. Let me give you the second way to update these uh, static columns. In our automation tab here, we have created a new bot and this could happen in a number of different ways. In our case, it is a scheduled bot 
that is running hourly. And this is going to perform this operation every hour. So uh, just imagine a scenario in which your users are going through this reporting view, they need to see certain metrics, um, but the relevancy of the data is not going to be outdated within an hour, maybe even a day, you know, something like that. And so you're going to use a bot to periodically update that table in the background. So that's what we've done in this case. We have created a new event. Again, this is running every hour for our reporting table. And what it's doing, it's just updating the timestamp updated column, which in turn is going to recalculate every app formula. Or if you, again, if you have those initial values and you have that feature reset on edit toggled on, it'll update those as well. So there you have it, some quick ways to update your application, um, move those virtual columns to static columns. Again, this is probably going to be your go-to uh, at first. If you're trying to, again, if you have some complicated calculations that may be taking place specifically, if they're doing queries over different tables, uh, you'll probably wanna try to start moving them to static columns. And if your app function simply won't work that way, like there's no way to dynamically update those whenever a user needs to see those metrics, then you can consider moving it to a virtual column. Um, but AppSheet does give you a lot of resources to update those dynamically within the app, again, through client-side actions or even through bots. Um, so hopefully those two use cases can work well for you and help you speed up your app performance. All right, been a pleasure. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time.